Hello teachers and our beloved students from Campus Sala. My name is Haley and I am very happy to be here to join us today vast talk session. And before meeting our special guest speakers and officially starting the session, let's watch a short clip introducing the content and speaker of this year vast talks. Các bạn đã thấm nhuận tinh thần Sam rất nhiều, sẽ có rất nhiều hy vọng là thế giới này nó sẽ xanh hơn. The more people in the community are to think about sustainable development, the more it's gonna work. Trong tương lai, những cái này nó sẽ đi vào cái tư duy, cái cách mà các em nhìn cái cuộc sống như thế nào. Có thể có được một cái cuộc sống tốt đẹp hơn, có được một cái tương lai tươi sáng hơn. So over the past two years, we have learned about sustainable development and practical action to contribute to the protection of the earth in our environment. This school year has been a very special year for all of us since we have to face so many changes and challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. More than ever, we must understand the most important values of ourselves in the community so that we can join hands to rebuild a more beautiful and meaningful life. To help our students understand more about this and prepare themselves with a strong spirit to be ready to be face all challenges in life, this year's Vast Talk program is organized with the theme Renovations Beyond True Values. So to start this session, I would like to introduce a very special guest who will join us today, Mr. Marcel Vamid, VAS Executive Chairman. Mr. Marcel has been with VAS Talk since the very first year and shared with us many meaningful experience and inspirational story. So this year, due to the COVID-19, he cannot be with us offline. But today, in, in this special section, we are very happy to have him here to share with us his thoughts on this SYTOVIC renovation based on two values. Please give a big online applause to welcome Mr. Maso. Thank you very much, Ellie. Um, and uh, hello to all our students. Uh, I also understand our staff uh, and our parents um, and our teachers are here. So welcome to you all. Um, first of all, my best wishes to all the students and, and parents uh, in this difficult time. Uh, my best wishes for your health and I hope you will remain well. Um, it has been a difficult time for everybody, um, so I also thank you for helping your children. And Peace. Hard work on the difficult circumstances. You are slowly coming out of, foreign, out of, out of isolation. Uh, I myself am now in quarantine. So uh, I am uh, I'm sadly not in Vietnam, but I hope to be with you again very soon. Uh, I miss my beautiful Vietnam. So I'll see you soon. Thank you very much to our, our guests today who are running the, the VAS renovation based on true values. We came up with this item because COVID has changed everything. And we've got to reset, we've got to reevaluate, and we've got to rethink how we wish to live our lives. 
and how we want to, our, our future to look like, how we want our planet to look like, how we want our life to look like, and how we want other people to look at us and themselves. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the debate. Thank you, guests, for giving your time generously. And also thank you to the VAS community for being interested in this topic and for listening. I hope you enjoy this session, and I hope to see you all soon again. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Massau. I think um, maybe the internet con connection had a little bit uh, low, but hopefully everyone could listen in. And thank you a lot for your meaningful sharing, Mr. Massau. I um, I think just not just me, also Ms. Hung and guest speaker today, it's our pleasure to be here today. And we also looking forward to meet you in person when the COVID is getting better. So we also welcome our guest speakers to our section who have been involved in social activity for many years and have achieved remarkable achievements. So they are here today to share their knowledge and experiences with all of us. And again, please give a big applause to welcome our guest speakers, Mr. Robert, Executive Cluster School Director of the Campus Sala, Ms. Ting Hung, co-founder of the Sales Sundong, Okay, so hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> good afternoon, nice to see you. Okay, good afternoon. <laughs> Miss Hong, can you turn on? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great to be back to VAS. This is my third year joining VAS and I'm very excited to meet uh, the teachers and the students and I hope that we're going to have an interesting discussion today. Yes, cool. So, uh, Mr. Robert, can you please say hello and have a few words with your student? I'd be delighted. I miss you very much. I can't wait. Uh, I'm actually back in campus for the first time today, and uh, it's not the same without the students there, but it's great to be here. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of something Winston Churchill said, which is relevant to our time at the moment. When he was talking about uh, the Second World War, he said, you know, we're not at, we're not at the end of this and we're not even at the beginning of the end he said but we might be at the end of the beginning uh, and I think that's very much how I feel about where we are with Covid okay maybe a little bit further on as we take our first steps out of lockdown but really really great to be back at campus and moving forward. Yes we're also happy to see you today too. <laughs> how about you Miss Hung? Um, so same thing for me um, maybe I'm, I'm going to do a quick introduction about myself first uh, so I am an educator by day. I work at Fulbright University of Vietnam in the admissions and financial aid office of the school. And by night, I do what Holly has introduced me, which is an environmental activist. I've been uh, serving a cave, the world's largest cave, which happened to be in Vietnam for the past seven years with a group of friends. And um, I completely understand what Mr. Matsell and Mr. Robert just mentioned because at Fulbright, we are going through the same thing. Our students cannot go to schools. Our teachers have to hold our classes online. And I'm, I live five minutes away from school, but I cannot go to campus. And I miss the livelihood of the campus. I miss the students uh, going around doing their projects. And I cannot wait to have a normal life back. So true, so true. Yeah, yes. Yeah, thank you for your lovely introduction. I think not just uh, even students here, they're looking forward to back to school as much as they can, right? And yeah, I think this is my part to introduce about myself. Uh, so this is my third time with VAS, but different character because last time I was the guest speaker and now I'm a host of this part house. So just for your information, if you don't know me yet, so my name is Haley again, and um, at the moment uh, I do modeling and I have also have two businesses. One is called the In Concept, so we sell in plant. We also do design for every green corner for any spaces. Uh, we call a green destination to fulfill your heart. And the second one is called uh, Light Day Refill Station. So we kind of zero waste store and we sell in environment plastic free product. And if you need or if you want to review anything you need at home, just come to our stores. Now we open again. <laughs> oh, so lucky. And beside that, I'm also a creative impact director of some foundation. 
uh, is a non-profit organization, so we also have two programs. One called Han Phuc Sun is Green Happiness. So we are aiming to plant marjorie across Vietnam as much as we can. And the other is called Nhà Chống Lũ, uh, Resilient Housing. So we have a low-income family to build house for protection from the flood, especially this season is the flood season. So you guys, students, in the future, you guys can come to our organization for volunteer because you couldn't gain a lot of experience from that for sure. OK, so if all the students have any question in advance, just send them the message, them, the question via the QR code on the background. So we're going to answer it at the end of the day, oh, at the end of the session. <laughs> all right, so um, let's get started with the topic today. And before we go um, deeper into it, I and I believe you guys too, students, have a wonder that the phrases true values um renovation somehow sound a little bit abstract in our daily lives, but it's not, right? So Miss Hung, how do you understand and apply it in everyday life? And do you have any example for us? Yeah. So um, when I first saw the slogan of VAS this year, I was really impressed. A renovation based on true values sounds like something really philosophical, um, really interesting. Uh, but I can see why some of the students may question what do these terms really mean? So I would break them into uh, two different phrases. Renovation, when I think of renovation, I think of remodeling my house. Right? Like if I need some plants, I'm going to go to the Ian concept of Kelly to buy some plants to make it more green, uh, which I think a lot of people have been enjoying doing for the past uh, three months, four months since that we've been locked out. We, the entire environment that we're living in is our home. So a lot of people have been uh, redecorating their place so that they can wake up to a new environment every day or every week at least. Um, but renovation is not just something that we do to places. It's something that we can apply to ourselves. So if I want to renovate myself, I, I would want to do something different, something interesting, something that makes me feel excited to wake up to, just like uh, a new, a new, uh, newly designed uh, apartment. Uh, so that's for me what it means by renovation, uh, doing something change, uh, something new. Uh, true values to me, um, I usually use the term core values. And when I think of core values, I think of what my PE teachers back in the day when I was uh, a high school student, just like you guys, used to tell me all the time, embrace your core, right? Like when you do an exercise, make sure that you engage everything so that you can have a right posture to do the exercises. So your core is basically your, your belly, right? And anything that comes from your core or the middle section of your body, it is basically the values that come from within. Now, even though I'm an educator and I, I do believe in the power of a teacher to influence and change a student, I also think that there are a lot of things that people just cannot influence you. You hold those values deep in your heart and, and they come out in the right time. You may not even know them or be able to call them, label them with a name. Uh, but they come out when 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 the emotion struck you. For example, I know that last weekend a lot of people were crying because of a governmental decision when they decided to kill 15 dogs of a family of a COVID-19 family because they were afraid that the dogs may be spreading uh, the virus. And a lot of people were showing their anger, their sadness online. And I think those emotions really speak truly to us, uh, help us to define what is our core values, what comes from within ourselves. Yes, I'm totally agree with you and so sorry about the dark cases happening came out. And I think it's, it's really a new article nowadays. We can think about it and refine our value when we think that cases still happen. Even now we talk a lot about human being, right? But uh, when you mentioned about the, the, the example of renovation, I feel released to listen to that, you know, because, you know, when I was listening to renovation, I thought, what is this? It's our economy pictures, not not something we're going to talk today, right? <laughs> but now it's still 
something very conventional and commonly and simple. And I think students, you guys can try it after the session, think about the house and how you want to renovation your house to make you feel better, you make you feel alive, right? And about the true value, the same. I love the idea when you mentioned the belly, <laughs> the belly. <laughs> Because it's the bottom part of the body and let's think imagining about how the body active. We need that part because it's the engine for us. It's also the mechanism for the body, right? Of the body. Because if we if we don't have that part, we cannot alive. How we can exist, right? So I love that idea too. And um, back to the um, Back to the, um, I think about the lock, um, locked up parent have teach us a lot of things, right? So I curious about that from Mr. Robert. What did you gain experience from that? And do you have any examples just like Ms. Hung mentioned about renovation? Yeah. Yeah, I do actually. That's very interesting. I mean, for me, you know, this idea about renovation, it couldn't be more appropriate for the time that we find ourselves in coming out of lockdown you know, rebuilding and repair is is what the next 12 months is all about, isn't it? And, you know, for, for me, my, my, my passion is community, right? And, and actually community is our values. We build a community around the values that we want to share. And for me, that's really, really important. So this idea about renovation around true values is all about how we look after our community, how we rebuild our community and how we move forward together. And it's and there's a fascinating paradox, isn't there? Because community is people and our environment. And you know, as devastating as COVID has been for the people in our community, and it really, you know, everybody, everybody here and everybody we know knows somebody who has been negatively impacted by COVID. As desperately, desperately sad as that has been, you know, our environment, nature, has actually recovered tremendously because of the because of people being knocked down, because of not so much traffic on the roads, because of much less industry happening. You know, CO2 levels have fallen across the world. Um, I, I walk into Sala, you know, and the, the the vegetation is taking over the sidewalk. You know, as nature's recovering. And if you if you go up on the roof of Sala at the moment, it's like a tropical jungle. I'd be surprised if we didn't have tigers and bears and lions. Crazy. So as, as damaging as it has been for our people in our community, our environment has actually recovered very nicely. And there's an important a lesson in there that, you know, nature, nature will recover. We just have to make the right choices. Um, the second part of that really, really does link into what Tien was saying about renovation being something you do at home you know, and improving your, improving your home environment. You know, we have a, I don't know, I don't know whether you have this expression here in Vietnam, but DIY is, a, is an expression we use at, at home in England a lot, which is do it yourself. And it relies to home improvement. I would definitely be coming around to buy some materials and things to actually improve my home environment. It's what we, it's what we love to do. But the important part of that for me at this moment in time is the emphasis on do it yourself. Do it yourself. We mustn't, we mustn't rely on others. Other people will be there for us, but actually we have to make the right choices. We have to act in the right way at this moment and not ignore our responsibilities to either the people in our community or to the nature in our community, to our environment. And you know what, that part of that is about the choices we make for ourselves. But another part of that, and, I, and I'm delighted to have, be talking to the two of you who model this so beautifully, it's about our leadership of the community. And, I, and I'll definitely come back to that later on in, as, we, as we talk. But we all have a responsibility to ourselves to make the right choices, but also to our community. I'm very excited about that today, and we're going to explore those themes, I'm sure. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to for your sharing this yes, further. And... Um, well, actually, what you mentioned about the nature, the earth, like maybe somehow during the pandemic and lockdown, it gave us a hypothesis about how they can recover themselves. It's also a good example for us to think about us as a human we can do during the lockdown. 
My so base so from from beginning is really bad. It really was because everything is postponed, just delay, and we cannot do anything. But somehow it also gave us a chance to think about ourselves in this community. Mm. Or maybe it's time to think more about the true value, right? Sometimes it's, it's used to be value, but was it good value? Was it true value? So now is a good time to think about it because nothing distracts us from now, <laughs> right? Sure, we've had, we've had 12 weeks now to think about things and think about our lives. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. right. Yeah. And student, I I have to say one thing. When I was your age, actually, when I think about renovation and true value, it sounds like a big concept. But just like I mentioned, is is right now the right time? Any time should be the right time because it helps you to you know rethink about it, conscious about it. Because just you can answer it. What is the value? So how do we know good or not good for not good value? So that's why we have the session today, and that's why we are here today to talk about it, right? So now moving on to the renovations on based on true value, because now we understand a separately renovation and true value. But how we combine renovation based on true value? So Miss Hung, <laughs> I um. I do wonder, like, how do you define it? And I do another wonder that, you know, like you you realize this when the age of the students or you have to grow up and then you realize this too. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I think what Howley just asked is a very interesting thing to think about. I mean, each of us have our own values, but how do we determine whether they are good values or not, right? Uh, I, I would say that I mean, I am nobody to judge your core values. Each of you have your own. Uh, but the good thing is, one one of the good things that you can look at is that each of the high schools that I've been to, uh, or, or colleges that I've been to, they all have a set of values that I promote. I know that FBA, SES have a set of seven values. I don't remember the, all of them, but uh, some of those that I've heard of also are very interesting. Um, at Fort Bright University of Vietnam, we do have three core values that we promote, uh, not just among our students, but even among our applicants. Students who want to apply to become part of Fort Bright University of Vietnam, they have to show, they have to demonstrate in their application that they carry these values. And I'm going to pick one of them to be the example to answer Howley's second question, how do we renovate ourselves based on true values? So one of the three values that Fulbright asked for is um, intellectual curiosity. Uh, we encourage our students to be curious about the world around them and not just curious in a way that like you have question about something like you wonder why, why are clouds uh, white and why is the sky blue and, and you stop at that. You, you should pursue your journey to find the answers to these questions. And me, myself, I am somebody who loves learning languages, but then I realized that the only language, the only two languages that I can speak confidently is my mother tongue, Vietnamese, and English, the, the language that I studied most of my life in. I realized that there are other languages that I, I try to pick up during the years and I never succeed. For example, in high school, I learned French, in college, I learned uh, Spanish. And uh, there was a short time where I, where I was dating a Japanese guy and I was trying to learn Japanese, but it was too hard and I gave up. And I told myself, all of these learning would, would be useless if I don't keep on practicing them. So why don't I use the time where I, all I can do is within my home because of the lockdown, why don't I, I, I take advantage of this time to actually study something and, and make it become a language that I can actually use. And I downloaded this app that I highly recommend you guys to do because this is free and it's fun, especially for kids. It's called Duolingo. Probably a lot of you have heard of it. Um, it's a very interactive game where you can learn languages. You may not become an excellent speaker of the language, but I'm sure you're going to improve over time because the app tries to help you build a habit of learning every single day. So that is an example of myself where I renovate based on my true value. 
Wow. Totally agree with you. And your toes, uh, your toes story um, just say remind me of the question that most of philosophers say about existential question, like why we are here, why do we exist, why we live for what, right? And for myself, I think when I have that question quite earlier, maybe from 15 and 16, which is me the same age of student now. Because when we think about it, we could imagine the scenario when we get in older, right? Like the scenario is fine, 10, 20 years, you're going to have that pictures. It could be like we go to the college or university. Um, we may, we have a career, right? We may get married, have 10, five kids, for example, no, I don't think so. <laughs> but but don't um, don't scare about it. if 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 those not your ideas or vision that's fine nobody trusts you but think about it like we do have to do the same thing every day every time even right now is it decision making not in the five, next five years not in the next ten years right now decision making so value is simply an internal principle that guides us um, guides our decision. And it's also a standard that represents for who you are in this, in this society, in your community. Your community should be your school and your friends, your class school, and or sometimes just yourself. And if you want to change your, your world, you must inter, uh, internalize your, your value. And if it goes, that's better. Because um, the world is not a macro picture, it could be a nano picture, it's like how you want to change your family habit. Like when you when, when you say your family member about you want to reduce a plastic, right? Even in your class, in your school, when you want to change something that you feel like it must be better. And renovations for me, like it the phase that happen when you don't want to do just for good anymore, because you want to change for good. Because the world, our world, in the world, still moving and people will changing the circumstance, uh, the circumstance and also the context of what we see today we're switching to. Like five years ago, we didn't expect the pandemic could happen right now, right? And in the future too. So that's why we have to prepare something, for example, the value. And if you have that shape in your, your body, your mind could be, Anytime you can, you know, fight for it. Because the causes today, we can see that we have so many challenges like population, plastic, disaster, pandemics. And if we don't shape in a map in our value, when things happen again in the future, don't you think you have enough energy to do and fight for it, right? And now I do really care about Mr. Robert again. I remember that the school have um, the system that our seven core value of fast students. So what value should students focus on promoting with the teams of this school year? Well, that's interesting, isn't it? So, I mean, for, for this year, my the themes that I've been talking to students about threefold. And uh, the first the first one of those is how we have to marginalize luck from our lives. And we do that by by working hard and making the right choices. You know, so we can, it's very easy, especially when, when times are difficult, it's very easy for us to bemoan our bad luck and misfortune. And that often leads to people blaming each other. You know, we don't want that. That's not helpful for anybody. What we have to do, we have to look to ourselves and we have to work harder. And that puts us in a position so when an opportunity presents itself, we can grasp it with both hands and we can take the opportunity and move forward. It also means that if chance deals us some difficult situations, you know, we're in a position where we can ride that difficult weather, we can ride that storm, we come out the other side. I think that's that's really, really important. So we want to marginalise luck. We don't want luck to take a part in our lives. We want hard work, dedication. That's the, that's the key message. The other thing that we've been talking about at Salah, I've been talking about at Salah, I want to make a big deal about this is, you know, we don't want want to make an enemy of quite good. Quite good isn't good enough in anything that we do, right? It's got to be, it's got to be great. It's got to be really excellent. You know, we want to aspire for people to look at what we do and say, right, that's, that's what we want to model. 
You know, it's so easy when things are tough to just kind of go, oh, you know, that piece of homework's good enough or you know, I'm not I'm not quite feeling myself today. I'm not going to try as hard as I might in this lesson. Well, I, you know, and, and, I, and I get it. Right. I know particularly with 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 all these students that we've got here all online, I know that that presents certain challenges. But actually, do you know, we have a responsibility to make sure that all those lessons are great and that our attitude in those lessons is always great. That's really, really important. You know, and, the, and the third, the third thing that I that I stress over and over is, you know, this is a this is a year long program. This is we're not gonna we're not gonna get GCSEs and A levels this week or next week. You know, school is a twelve year program, right? And it's what it's how we perform at the end of that twelve years that really matters. Of course, we build, we build, we build as we go through. But what really matters is how we do at the end. So we've got to take care of ourselves. We've got to make sure that we pace ourselves out so that actually by the time we get to the end, we've got the energy for that final drive to pass those exams with fine colours, to get those entrance qualifications so we can go on to fabulous universities. Like this one, you know. so they're, my th they're my three things. We must marginalise luck. We've got to make an enemy of quite good. And we've got to pace ourselves for the marathon ahead. Yes, what yes, you say what just like was okay what you said just like a quote that um how work pay off right so just like when you mentioned about don't do just for quite good have to do for good and yes. also if you do good already you have to do to be great because <laughs> it's it's remind me of the economy books go from good to great and I used to I, I used to ask my my, my teacher when I was young like how to be great and he answered me like like the water into my face like do you think that you already do good so it, it was like okay i have to go back home and think about everything i do now that I, did i do good because somehow when when we was young we have so many dreams we ambitious but think about how by positioning where we are to make sure everything everything step by step from good to great because if the, from beginning you don't have a good habit and then you looking for great it's gonna break any time in the future that's what i learned from my business to like from beginning i have a big mission big vision i want to do great but actually we have to do good from beginning by practice every day every day and then we learn from that and to be great in the future too yes I so sure. love your sharing, <laughs> Mr. Brown. Vision is really important, isn't it? Having a, having an idea about what you want to achieve, whatever that might be, you know, and, and it can be it can be as varied as an individual to each student in this school. But have a vision, understand what you're trying to accomplish, because then you can focus, or like you say, on those steps to achieve that. Really, yes. really important. I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. So okay, and um. Let imagine when you, Mr. Robert, when you were young and right now, if you have one advice for the student, not not good and great anymore, like anything interesting for a student right now in the locked up period. So do you have any like you want to send to the student that can apply right now in this school year to get the best results? <laughs> yes, well, yes. So absolutely. I think the, the key thing for me is to be kind to yourself because you're there's so much pressure and so much stress and you know we will we will push because we want you to succeed and your families want you to succeed and we do want you to be great but that doesn't mean that you have to push yourself and push yourself until you can't cope so take time to be kind to yourself because rest is a really powerful tool for making sure that your brain and your body are recharged so that you can make every effort to be great in every lesson so my message would be you know work hard of course but also be kind to yourself yes and because i i do love that ideas too because i i think like people always want to send love to everyone around them right the happiness but if you and yourself not feel happiness like because you're not kind to yourself you cannot send that energy to everyone around you yes Okay, so um, it's my bit said that the COVID-19 pandemic um, is un unexpected and our lives have been disturbed and changed a lot. 
all of our students in here also need to prepare a spirit of perseverance and high ability and the ability to improvise to be ready to enter the new normal life. So I think uh, Ms. Hung, you have been through that too, right? So do you have any small specific situation that students can apply to renovate their lives and those around them in advance? Yeah. Yeah, so since you asked about what we can renovate for ourselves and the people around us, uh, I, I would refer to another core value of Fulbright that we talked about a lot with our students, which is caring for others. Um, more than ever, I think COVID has proven to us that the world is getting smaller and smaller. If 100 years ago, when the Spanish flu happened in the West, and most countries in Asia like had no idea what is Spanish flu even, we weren't affected by a pandemic halfway across the globe. But that is no longer the case for COVID-19 today. As you can see, Vietnam is receiving a lot of vaccines from other countries sending to us because everybody is aware, it, WHO is aware that as long as there's still one country suffering from the outbreak, the entire world is suffering from the outbreak. The world is getting smaller and you can apply that lesson to yourself. Now, if I'm only healthy, if I stay healthy, if I stay safe, but the people around me are not healthy and not safe, that's not good for anybody. So I'm not just looking out for myself, I also have to look out for my community. And that can start with something very, very tiny from wearing your mask, getting your vaccine shots when you can, when you are allowed to, to, to other simpler things. For example, um, most of you guys here are from eighth grade to 12th grade. So you are in that age group where you're transitioning from being a, a, a child to an adult. When you were a child, you have all of your needs met. Uh, people supposed to meet your, your needs and not a way, the other way around. You, if you're hungry, you cry and your mother is going to feed you. You don't have to care whether she just had a very long working day. All you need to do is to cry, right? But now that you are growing into an adult, it's time for you to take care of the people around you. Perhaps start with taking care of your parents first. Ask what they like to eat. Go on YouTube, learn a recipe, try to cook them the first meal of your life, you know, little things like that that you do. I guarantee with you whether the meal is delicious or not, your parents will be really appreciative of your effort. So start doing something for the people around you, okay kids? Yeah, so good. Uh, <laughs> Miss Hung, I saw you cook um, a bag, bag something? Uh, a bread yesterday. Can you share <laughs> us an uh, experience from that? How your your parents comment on it? <laughs> yeah, like I, I love baking. Baking is fun, even though like bake, Vietnam doesn't have the best weather to bake. Turn on your oven can like sweat me so much already. But uh, yeah, baking, cooking, all of those things that you know usually we don't have time for. Um, being in a lockdown gives us plenty of time to try something new, try a new hobby. Yeah, so yeah. it's true that there's a lot of everyday situation that require children to show their true value and be flexible in how they improvise even in the house too. So I'm I do curious about you, Miss Hung. Like during the lockdown, any like do you constantly develop it to be a good value or different value? Do you have any example about that too? Well I mean I guess it's, it's, it's not easy, to be honest, to always stay in track during the lockdown. Um, like uh, Mr. Davis just said, there are, a lot, there are a lot of times that you just have to remind yourself that you need to take care of yourself. Well, I, I, I'm trying to build this habit of learning a new language every single day, just even just five minutes. I have to get on the app to do it. But there are days that I recognize to myself that I just really need to break right now. I need a break from my phone, from the internet, from social media, from, from anything that, that can fix and moves and all of that. So I shut them all down. And I think it's okay that um, once in a while you 
put aside all all of the the goals that you keep the putting up for yourself, all of the resolutions, New Year resolutions that you give yourself, put that aside, relax, and sometimes those are the best time for you to rethink to yourself what are your actually true values that the day after you can have the energy to get back to them. Yes. Yeah. And student, I think like if you think about what do what do we need value? Like actually, like I mentioned, value would you know determine your behavior and to and decision too. And you know what? A good value also will positively impact your life, your community, your family, and those around you. For example, your friends too. Because, for example, when you say something bad happened and you want to give advice, but if your voice is not enough, that's why, that's the reason why the value, your value may be not enough, the power. So if you have time to think about it, like for example, now you have time at home and thinking about it and check it, it's going to be turn your voice louder and impact anything, anyone around you. And moreover, not thinking back of lies more than our value. And good, all, good value also allow you to have order and care for them. I think because during the lockdown, um, what what we have practiced is like how empathy and how cautious, like Mr. Robot just mentioned. Like, I felt a lot of NGO, non-profit government happened during the lockdown because we see so many poor cases happen during the lockdown, right? Because there's so many situation problems and not enough people to solve it. Then us used to be think that, oh, we may not have enough energy or voice to do it. But I felt it's just an initial hypothesis. For now, we do have example, everyone could be a volunteer for anything we could solve in the, our community. For, for example, I was like, like in the past four months, in previous time before that, I didn't have chance to talk a lot with security team in my apartment or even team in my building. That, but this time gave me a chance to talk a lot with them. Also, we share food, things like that. I feel like, yeah, the way I take action and nothing from my mind, from imagination, one time I think about it and then I ask them and I communicate with them. I feel like my value really happened, not what I imagine or just think about it anymore. So student, I think that right now you still have family, you still have friends, even cousins, aunts or teachers. Anytime to send them anything you you think, give, give the energy because it's going to be rebuild community. Somehow it's not physical, but now online too bad that we just do it online like this section. But when you do it, you will feel alive. Your heart's gonna pick like how you feel about it, definitely. Yeah. Mr. Robert, I think you, you also have things have been done during the lockdown. Do you do you want to share with us too? What made you feel alive during the lockdown? <laughs> I'll tell you I'll tell you what was beautiful during lockdown was the just what you were talking about the really selfless gestures that so many people gave of their time or of them of their helping each other time to help each other or giving food you know um so many of the many of the kitchens who couldn't work couldn't deliver food couldn't provide meals they started providing meals for needing needy people across Ho Chi Minh City that's such a beautiful thing you know, we we have um, we have within the, within the VAS community, we have parents who are delivering fruit and vegetables across Ho Chi Minh City to those who are in desperate need. You know, th these these beautiful selfless gestures, just really heartwarming. You know, and 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 that's that's the sign of a strong community, a community that cares for each other, that's not looking for what they can get out of the community, but actually. What they can do for the community, to paraphrase a famous expression, you know that's that's just beautiful. So for me, although it was difficult, I actually think for the most part, this lockdown and this crisis has actually brought out the best in people, and I think that's really that's really special. Long may that continue. That's the thing now. Okay, <laughs> that's there in the community. Let's build on that. 
Yes, and I do like for now I can see the community that fast already built, right? This session, mm. any session in the future, we do even not physically in person talk to each other, but online still can build community when we want to build it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Robert. <laughs> So in this session on, on the topic renovations based on true value, we have just gone through these points. Familiar example relate to your everyday life. Second, the definition and meaning of team renovations based on true values. And last, specific situation and practical action that students can do to promote this spirit along this training tip so that you guys can come and can be ready to face difficulties in life. And now we go to the, um, the special part. Now we come to the Q&A with our guest speakers. So I would like to invite Mr. Marcel to join us in the Q&A session. So can you please turn on the camera as well? Welcome back. Hi, I'm still here. Okay, the internet now is getting here, I was better. Here all the time. Thank you very much for uh, for uh, all your uh, fantastic uh, sharings with us. Yeah, thank you for being here with us too. So now I will need technical team to support us. Um, maybe I need. Oh, sorry. I need some. Okay. Student, just raise your hand and, and let us know your question so we're ready for it. So our technical team is going to support us. Okay, I I see so many hands. Okay, I would love to uh, to invite Em Trần Thái Quỳnh Trần from Class A, SAO 4A. Hi, Em. Uh, can you please turn on the camera and meet and ask questions? Oh, hi. So I have a question. How can you guys see me? Hello. <laughs> yes, we can see you. Um, so um, based on what I know and I'm experiencing myself, staying home for like a, a long time like this plus all of the online studying we have could negatively affect our mentalities so besides just like relax or take a rest is there anything else or any activities that we students or like teenagers can also do online or at home that will support our minds and thinkings for the upcoming challenges in the future so that we are prepared and we feel good during this pandemic and this whole situations. Yes, thank you, Aim Jung. I think not just um, you guys or um, teenagers worry about mental health, even us adults, we, st we still do have it too. So how about you, Mr. Marcel? How do you think about it? Well, I think a lot about this. Uh, um, I'm in quarantine now. Uh, this is probably my fifth or sixth quarantine I've had in the last two years. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with uh, being in a room by myself uh, for some time. And, and mental health is, is a key thing. Um, the, the, yeah, Tran, Tran, you mentioned uh, that, uh, you know, you've been studying online um, and you're obviously at home. And what I think is important uh, is that you, you stay connected right and you stay connected to friends and you stay connected to reality because the online uh, dimensions uh, is a one dimensional thing you know and our world is a is a three dimensional thing um and uh, and uh, to and talking to you now here is also quite difficult it, you know we always say i want to look somebody in the eye right which means that we are together, looking in each other's eyes when we speak, we see our body language, we see our facial expressions. And that is the, the three-dimensional thing that we cannot get very easily from a screen. So, so really thinking about trying to connect with your emotions inside you whilst you talk to your friends and, 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 and not make it superficial because the internet is a very superficial thing. All you young people on this 
here are all on social media, Facebook, Twitter, so forth. And, you know, it is quick, quick. It is shallow. It is not very deep. It is sound bite. And that's okay if you're the rest of your life is uh, is normal, i.e. you're free, you meet people in person, you go to class, you see your teachers, you see, you know, and, and, and all that. But so you have to be very careful that you don't become isolated on your own and everything is sound bites. So, so take the time, I guess, to have real conversations, to talk about real life um, rather than, you know, all, all the time swiping, 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 um, because it is not the swiping that's the problem. It's your brain that is swiping, you know? And so, so I really would like you to, and, and that's what I do. I think about my family. I think about the things that I will do next month, next year. I think about the things I have done with my family and my friends to keep those things alive in my head. Because if I just have to focus on the reality of the swiping, then life can become very difficult. You know, so stay with your mind in reality is probably the way that, that I cope with it. The second thing that I would say is it's very difficult, but do some physical exercise. You know, if it is press ups, sit ups, uh, jumping up and down and on, on the same spot, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, your, your body is the temple of your brain. And if your body deteriorates, then your brain will also struggle because you're, you are basically one chemical factory, right? I mean, not a negative chemical factory, right? But you're, you're, so if you don't use your body, the chemicals also change and chemicals are the ones that fuel your brain. So, so certainly I, I, you know, uh, I, will, I will, in the afternoon, I have a regular session where you know, I will do some of my press ups and some of my sit ups, uh, and I might even up and down, jump up and down, even though I won't tell you that. So, so <laughs> those are the two things that I would recommend people do, and because that's what I do, and that's how I stay well enough. Yes, thank you for your practical sharing. I think the same of this exercise. Actually, you can even, you know, like if you want to connect with your friend, you can call your friend and then now you can invite your friend to do an exercise too because it's really fun. I recommend you to do that too because, you know, like we need motivate and we need to see my friend like how they gain their weight um, must muscle, right? So you can try even not just call for exercise for studying, for watching movie together, I think have a cup of tea and share anything you want to. I I think Miss Hung have some example. I think like, oh, actually, when I think about your question, I think about teachers from VAS going to say, OK, I will try to less pressure from the homework for you. But I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Miss Hung and Mr. Ropa, do you have any idea for for, me, for Im Jung? <laughs> Yeah, we, we the, the homework is important, right? So, uh, <laughs> but but balance but balance in all things for sure. I think um, the other the other thing is to remember how remarkable you are, because when you're when you're flicking through Instagram or Facebook or whatever, you what you see are not real images of people. They are glorified, filtered, stylized images, right? And that's not real life. You're, you're an amazing person who's got great value and you should always remember that. Absolutely. Yes, but I feel guilty a little bit because I do have social media and then, yeah, I'm sure. About... No filters, right? No filters. <laughs> no filters, I'm sure no filters. <laughs> How about you, Miss Hoon? Um, so I think a lot of people have given good advice already. Uh, um, I, I think I would take it a step further in case that if you guys, the students, are struggling with your mental health, it's, there's no shame in seeking professional help. And this is something that at Fulbright we emphasize with our students a lot because a lot of them, unlike you guys, they are students from outside of, uh, of, of Ho Chi Minh City, even outside of Vietnam, coming to Fulbright to study. They're suffering a lot from homesickness, from depression even. 
And, uh, and one of the things that Fulbright tries to do for our teachers, students, and also staff is that we cover mental health uh, a wellness center, uh, provide those services for the students. So yes, uh, the easy step, first step, you know, you can go get a plant, grow a plant, you know, go to Ian concept of G Healthy to get a, a pretty plant, grow it. Uh, or adopt a, a puppy, you know, if those are the things that, that make you happy. Talk to your puppy even, talk to your plant even. But if your plant or your puppy start talking back to you, it is time for you to seek professional help, okay? And, and no shame whatsoever. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Tung. Okay, now we have um, to go to um, another student. Student, you can raise your hand again. Don't be shy. We're going to talk back to you. <laughs> We're not a plant. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay, I see um, a hand from uh, Lin Jung Ban from class 9 sl 3 i Can you turn on the mic and camera? Don't be shy. Uh, yes, uh, can you hear me right now? I yeah, I hear you. Um, okay, yeah. now we see you too. Okay. Um, so uh, before I ask my question, uh, I would like to just take a moment to introduce who I am. So my name is Bang. You can call me Brian. I'm in ninth grade right now, and my class is in um, is currently in nine point three. So my question here is that uh, first, I know that um, some students are studying with no passion just because their parents force them to, or uh, the society exerts pressure on them to do so. And so um, what is this relationship between um, my situation, uh, I mean this situation, and renovation based on true values, uh, considering um, those students' mental health and happiness? Wow, yeah, this is the wisdom question. Who it's, first? It's a Mr. rather Marcel. deep question. Yes. Yeah, oh my God. Uh, you know, uh, 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 Brian, uh, you, you ask a very complex question because, um, you know, when you are grade nine, uh, you are, and this is globally the case, you have to legally still be in school. So if you're asking me why should children <laughs> go to school, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, there are many reasons, but it is a way of educating you and educating your friends and put and really equipping you with the skills that you need in life. Um, there are always children who don't enjoy uh, going to school, but uh, I think there are two aspects. The online learning is more difficult because a lot of people who love going to school or even or even don't like learning, they love going to school because they can meet people, friends, and, and that is really also a way for you to grow. So I can understand that some children will find it much more difficult because they are not seeing their friends and they're not at school because for them, that is one of the most important aspects of going to school. So, it's not easy and there is no straightforward answer, but I would like you to think about responsibility uh, and renovation. So if you think about the ch challenges that we face in the world, they are very complex and they are myriad, I, unlimited. And in order to solve those, we need bright, young, passionate people and we need everyone to join that club because on our own we cannot solve it so i would say to those who struggle and who don't enjoy so much the online think about your responsibility towards your fellow students your fellow human beings this planet and what can you contribute? Too often, I have seen during this crisis and before this crisis, people thinking about what others can do for you, rather than what can we contribute? 
And that is where I would like you to think about. And that's where my answer is. It may be difficult and it may not come natural to you, but there is a place for you to help to improve this world by adding your passion, by adding knowledge and experience in the future. And that, and, and, and everybody has a place in this. Doesn't matter if you are the rocket scientist, yeah, or if you, or, or if you are working in the canteen or whatever it is, everybody has a place in doing this. So, so that is how I would like you to, I'd like to answer to you. Yes. Yes. I agree. Uh, how about Mr. Robert and Ms. Hu? Yes, uh, and uh, it is a great question, and I want I want you to reflect on on this just for me at the moment. That ed education is a pyramid, and what happens is as you work your way through the years of education and you progress through different stages of your education, it becomes more and more and more specialised. So, for example, where, where you are now in, in grade, uh, grade nine, did you say? 9.3? Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So at the moment, you're covering a whole range of subjects. And some of those subjects you'll love and some of those subjects you'll find really challenging, but they're all providing you with a fundamental education that's going to enable you to move on to the next phase where you take A-levels and you can specialise a bit. And then you can pass those A-levels and you can go on and do a degree in one particular topic. And then you can specialize again and do a, a doctorate on a particular ant that lives on a particular leaf in a particular part of a country, right? You really focus in on something that you're absolutely passionate about. And when you find that passion, whatever you do, whether it's work or study, actually it becomes not easier, you still face challenges, but actually somehow you find the energy for it because it's something you're, that you love doing and something that you're passionate about. So my advice to you would be this. I know it's tough. Grade grade nine and 10, tough years because you've got that broad spectrum of education. You've got subjects in there that you love, subjects in there that you don't like so much. You know, hang on in there because you're going to get through that. And you, you especially, you know, really bright. You're, gonna, you're going to do yourself some amazing power of good in terms of the GCSE results you're going to get. Then you can specialize a little bit. You can start to focus in on those either the sciences or the humanities subjects that you really, really love. That's where your passion will come to light. You know, some, some people don't find their passion until they finish their first degree. You know, some people do quite general first degrees and then all of a sudden they decide, you know, this is what I want. Right? I, th I thought I wanted to be an engineer. So I did, I did a four year engineering degree and started to build helicopters. And it wasn't until I started working with children that I actually realized that's that's the passion of my life, right? Helping others to develop and, and become great people themselves. So I just my advice to you is just hang in there and you will find your passion and you will specialize and you will be amazing. Yes. Miss Hung? Yeah, I, I also completely agree with the with the pyramid model. Um, so Fulbright, we we are a liberal arts college, so we also believe in, in, in broad knowledge before you can deep dive into one particular field, like studying that ant that lives on the leaves that, that only exists in that one country. Before you can get there, you have to know what is out there. How do you even know that you're passionate about ants, about leaves, you know, before you, you, you study biology? So yes, there will be things that you're like, oh, why do I have to learn this today? You know, the same thing happens in college, not just in high school. We have students who get to the first year of college and, and realize, oh my God, I still have to take like five core courses. I have to explore different fields of study before I can pick my major and just focus on my capstone. And we, we like, yeah, we believe this is the way to go. And if you choose, you know, um, to to follow this educational model, that's what you're going to do. And and I know, Bang, I completely hear you, uh, but I strongly believe that you're going to find the light at the end of the tunnel once you get through all of these like core studies. And, and when you get to, you find your passion. I didn't get to find my passion until I turned 27. I can tell you that I study uh, communications in college. 
And like, yeah, it's fun and all, but I didn't feel passionate about it until I went to Sundong Cave when I was 27. And I realized my passion is about the environment, is about sustainable development, is working for NGOs, working in education. So you, you find it, okay? Yes, Brian, I think um, if even you have a complex question, but our guest speaker, Marcel, Mr. Brokers, Ms. Hoon have answered, it's like a journey. Each of us has different path, mission and vision. I honestly, when I was your age, I had the same issues, the same. And first thing I, I, I need you to think about that you are not alone. And what's happened for now, just beginner. Because life now, the challenges you have, if you can pass it in the future, you cannot pass it. So now just see it as a challenge for you to shape in your passion, to shape in your value, to shape in your voice. Because it's, it's, you, you still have chance, you know, time, chance to show your community, to show your family. I honestly, when I was your age, I, I tried to sneak it, do something that my parents don't want to. And then when, when things happen, you can show the evidence to your family. Instead of you try to, you know, avoid everything that your parents say, because sometimes as your age, you have to show the evidence, you know, something can visible can think about. Because, you know, like for now, it's, it's good. You just say, oh, it's could be complex. Everything force you. But in the future, I'm sure with you, you will have time to think about it because that time your parent no more force you anymore because that time you will be going to force you in the future. It's like, oh, should career or this career? Why choose this or why choose this? You know, like when you study philosophy from essence to modern contemporary accruement or a crisis, still happen it's not now in the future still so now just face to it and then you're gonna pass it you're gonna solve it yourself for sure so we now still give you gave you just some example just you who create a story yourself thank you <laughs> yes thank you okay so uh students another hand i saw um student Jung Tan Yui from class 10 SL3I. Can you turn on a bit and camera, please? Hello, can you hear me? <clears throat> Hello. OK, hi. So I'm Yui from 10.3. And I just have one question regarding to the environment, which is slightly different from what we're talking right now. And so after this long pandemic, especially through the lockdown, like what we've had before, um, the climate has significantly improved with um, dramatic decrease to emissions due to things like um, stoppage of factories or the reductions of traffic. And because of this, what can we do when People get busy again when our life starts to no become normal again to sort of keep with these conditions to keep it like this and possibly improve it in the future. Wow, so now the question turns to environment. Who wants to come for to answer this? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy to. I, I think the reason why you're asking me about, or asking us about the environment is that one thing we have realized during this two-year pandemic that the beauty of nature even just outside our apartment or outside the house gives us something that makes us feel better um, and i think a lot of people have realized that even sitting on your balcony, listening to the birds or the wind or look out at the greenness gives us a calmness, a inner peace that you cannot buy. Um, and however, we are facing a big problem because this crisis has also caused a major economic downturn. And in order to work ourselves out of this economic downturn 
and Vietnam is no different. Um, we need to produce. We need to manufacture. We need to consume. So I am particularly worried about uh, production in China. Um, I'm also worried about production in Vietnam, which is growing. So we need two things, and we can't have it only one way. We need production in Vietnam to make sure that people have jobs and they can earn a, a living and can feed their children and themselves and go to school and all the things that we need. But how we manufacture and how we consume is the key. I think there is only one way, and that way is not to rely on governments, because governments are all about economic growth and they have real problems. The choice is about what you do and what I do and everybody else. So think about what you buy, where it comes from, what, how it is manufactured, and so forth. So if everyone on this call and if everyone in this world started to think about what are the materials that they use to produce this? What are, how much energy does it cost to produce this? How much energy does it cost to transport it from China all the way to London? Or if you are thinking about uh, expensive goods, like even like a Louis Vuitton handbag or a, or a Chanel handbag come from France to Vietnam. These are all things. You know, uh, that influence our environment. So think about what you buy. And if there is a smarter way of buying it, and also, of course, about recycling and, uh, and reusing and all of that, that, that stuff. But, but it is all about you. It's a, you are the only ones who are going to make this happen. Yes. Sorry, with Mr. Marcel. I I think also like like in the previous time we talk about you know during the lockdown and if we don't have that chance we we may not have chance to see how recovery of the nature right. So I think when you trigger with this question you already have a good observation of everything happened, which is really good and right time for you to take action because when you believe in things could happen which will give you um, a trust, you know, to renovate anything could happen because you guys are new generation, you guys are going to be the next generation to change the world. So those are the hypotheses. It's really good for you guys to make a change in the future. And as Magatan Gan, he used to say, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. So for now, I think the value also shaping you like for who you want to be in the future. And right now you can take action. For sure, yeah. Miss do you want to share something? <laughs> um, actually, I think Mr. Marcel has summed up all of the most important points that 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 our students need to take away with this question already. But I just wanna praise Yui. Thank you so much for your question. Your question is is the reason why I look forward to coming back to VAS talk every single year. Like the level of thinking that you guys have, the, you know, not just critical thinking, but the, the, your question shows that you care for things outside of yourself, things that are bigger than ourselves, things that we've been talking about, encouraging you guys to caring for others. And yes, the earth, modern earth is other that we can care for. So, so thank you, Yui. Yeah, I believe Mr. Robert now so proud of the um, student from your campus, right? <laughs> Do you oh, want to say something? So generally, I, I, there's, there's not really much more that I, that I can possibly add. I think, I think, um, I think uh, Mr. Marcel and Ms. Song have talked beautifully about that. The one, the one thing I would say is, is this, uh, Dewey. You know, I've spoken to all of Salah before about your future, your destiny to be to be world leaders. You know, I, and I don't just say that to fluff you up. I'd say that because I genuinely believe it. And, and what, what Mr. Marcel was talking about is moral choices, the moral choices that we make. So I hope 
I really hope when you find yourself in charge of that multinational organisation and you've got that really difficult decision to make about chopping down 10,000 hectares of trees in order to, you know, whatever it is you've got to make, that you think about today and you think about those difficult choices and wants and needs and the moral choice that you've got and you make a, you make a great decision balanced and nuanced with the education that we've provided you and then, you know, we'll have done our job well. Good luck with that. <laughs> yes, thank you all, all the speakers today. So you have that help you a lot, right? Yeah. Oh, you have to turn on the menu. Yep, it has. Yeah, but it's give me a lot of um, things to think about and um, many things, many sort of uh, things to look about in the future, especially when I sort of go to the university and start some new projects or even into my work. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. And once again, we had to thank you for your question too. Thank you. Super. Okay, so uh, now we have two more questions from students. I I need more hands. Raise your hand. Don't be shy, students. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pick a hand from Em Dang Thai Hung from Class 11 SL1E. Can you turn on the mic and camera? please yeah about my camera the angle is kind of off so you guys can't <laughs> it's not because i'm shy but it's the camera fault it's the camera fault blame the camera are you sure and because the camera i think you're shy <laughs> no here you can i'm afraid to show my arm i can show my arm no my hand okay, <laughs> no okay go on okay okay, okay. so uh my name is Dang uh, Tai Hung, or you guys can call me Kevin. I'm a student at Via Stella Campus. I'm currently studying in uh, class 11.1. So uh, for my questions, I would like to ask Mr. Marcel personally, since he seems like a wise man, in my opinion. I like him because of that. He seems like a wise man who will give students good decisions in their life. So my question is, Based on your own life experience, what's the most realistic core values that everyone needs in their life in order to reestablish, I mean, sorry, reestablish a stable life? You know, um, I think, uh, you know, we've got a whole bunch of, of, uh, of uh, core values. You know, we've got seven core values. Um, and all of them are important, but if I had to say which one, it would probably have to be two minimum. Um, and it is teamwork and respect. Um, and the first, so in the last one, respect is both for yourself and for everybody else. So, you know, all of us have got objectives in life. We've got dreams that we wish to realize. Um, and we've got to respect ourselves for having those when we work with others. So for example, um, you know, a simple choice when, when, when somebody says, you know, well, would, you, would you like some water? And they offer it to you in a little plastic bottle. You might say, no, uh, I much rather have uh, water that doesn't come in a small plastic bottle. So, you know, that it's a simple thing. We've got to respect our own selves and what we wish to do and try to educate others. At the same time, we must also respect other people for their views because not everybody, and thank God, not everybody is the same. In realizing the goals and your dreams, you can never do that alone. You will need the support, cooperation, passion from your friends or from your co-workers or from your parents, brothers and sisters, your family, even government. You know, when you when you want to run a business or achieve something, we often have rules, regulations. So teamwork is key. To make anything happen is teamwork. The VAS, the VAS team, you know, is something that I, I've been with VAS now more than eight years. 
and the VASH team makes me proud every day. Sure, we don't do everything always perfectly because we're all human. But when I see them working together towards their goals, the goals of the organization, the goals to make sure we look after our students and our parents and our teachers and our staff, we do the best that we can because of their teamwork and their respect for each other and their passion in doing that. And if you want, to, and you will have your own goals, you will have your own dreams. If you want to achieve that, particularly after this pandemic, you know, people are now starting to see what is important to them. And I think, however, you need teamwork with that. So even when we talked about the, the previous question about uh, um, uh, how we're going to look after the environment, the only way is by a teamwork. You know, it's by 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 working together to find technical solutions, to find moral solutions uh, to to issues, um, and 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 that is probably how I would talk about my life. I have achieved nothing on my own, you know, nothing at all, um, and I'm grateful to all the people I've worked with in my life and for the people that have supported me to to make my own dreams come to realization, you know, and. Vietnam has been, an, and also your dream may not be as you expected. So people have, have, have taken me to places like Vietnam that I never expected to be. So my life has been beautiful uh, and it still is beautiful, thankfully. Um, and, uh, um, but I have always done that and achieved that by working with other people. Um, so respect. Teamwork and respect are the two items that I would probably uh, say in the new world are going to be more important than before. Yes, thank you for your sharing so meaningful, Mrs. Marcel. Uh, M. Hong, do you, do you feel satisfied with that answer? Because I do feel grateful for that. I don't see your face. I, don't, I, I want to see how you express it. <laughs> As expected from Mr. Marcel, the answer is wise and good as always, and I'm enlightened. I'm enlightened. I'm yeah. Thankful Thank for you. Thank you. You are too kind, uh, Kevin. Too no, kind. Take, you. take my word for it. Take my word. Okay, uh, so Aim, you can uh, take a picture of your face or send to Mr. Marcel uh, to see your face later, can you? Uh, I'll try. Okay, okay. So I think like when we mention like every problem we have, we we may mention like you are not alone, but in the long run, we we want to change our community. We have to do it together because it's gonna be a big picture. So I'm sure that the advice from Mr. Marcel that Tap share that we have to be together, no matter where you're from, no matter who you are, just together, so we can make a change. Yeah. Come on, em Hung. Thank you, em Hung. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now uh, we have to go to the the last question from student. Oh, so sad. Next, next time. Uh, I gotta pick a student. Um, the hand em Phạm Thị Nam Phương from class Trail S L O oh, from Cray Trail Trail S L O. Two one. Can you turn on the camera? Hopefully, you can turn on the camera, <laughs> and you're meant to. Hello, Ed. Hi. Good afternoon. I'm sorry because I'm not wearing VAS uniform right now, so I have some personal <laughs> issues, so I can't. So I'm not in Ho Chi Minh City, so I can't really wear my uniform. So my question is, um, what are the skill or like set of skill in your opinion, like related to learning that you think that like us grade 12 should, should prior, prioritize, like we should focus on, like it's the first thing we should think of and it's the first thing we should try to improve um, in now last year. Because like, um, even though I know that like physical health, mental health and teamwork is like very important, but us grade 12 is like we're at home we cannot do like um teamwork at at its best and like um we have like the least amount of time compared to the um, other year of vas students so what are you, what skills should we focus on the most 
that's my question. Thank you, Wei. So I think now turn to a person who really young here, Miss Hung. Like you have been, you know, close to the student, and you have been from college, and now you have a job and career, and now work closely with them. So do you have any experience about the skill that they need to? Yeah, I think there are a lot of skills that are important to a high school seniors like Nam Phuong to get ready for college or, or even if you choose not to pursue college and, and do something, um, you know, outside of the school setting. Uh, um, there are a lot of important skills, but I think the most important one, especially in these COVID days, are communications. Because like Mr. Marcel has said, teamwork is an essential part of your life. And it's impossible for you to do teamwork without clear communications. I see this happen at my workplace all the time. Most, most problems happen because of miscommunications. I rarely come across somebody who has, uh, you know, who means bad for other people. Uh, it's just that people misunderstand each other. And uh, again, at Fulbright, and I strongly believe that same thing at BAS, you guys have a lot of group projects. In order to do your group projects, communication is a key of that, uh, especially when you cannot do it uh, face to face. A lot of online communications can be quite misleading because you cannot see the person's expression. Like earlier, Helly keeps on asking Kevin to show his face because it's just so much easier when you can see the expressions on the other person's face. Uh, and when you don't get to see that, it's, it, it can be hard. So communication would be a skill that I think you need to have for sure. Uh, but something else, this is not a skill, but this is more a, a mindset. Uh, empathy, being empathic to other people. Uh, always assume the best for other people. Give people the benefit of the doubt. When they say something that you fundamentally disagree with, maybe think that, oh, they just don't know how to express their ideas. Or maybe they because of where they're coming from. From their background, they may see things from the perspective, they may see things differently from I do, but that doesn't mean that they are trying to hurt me or harm me in any ways. So yeah, uh, skill set, communication, mindset, empathy. Yes, do you hear that uh, info? I want, I, I try to communicate. I'm not sure that you still listen to <laughs> Okay, how about you, Mr. Robert? I want to just um, jump back to something that Ms. Hung said earlier on, and that's uh, one of the essential skills that we want you to take away from BAS is one of curiosity. If you can be curious about the world around you, that is going to set you up for life. So I, I you know, if one, one skill you could take away not really a skill, it's more of an attribute, isn't it, really? But if you could leave VAS curious about the world around you and prepared to investigate, to find out more, I think that would make me very happy. Yes, Toro, agree with Mr. Robert. How about you, Mr. Marcel? <laughs> you have been waiting to answer, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I think the, the, the answers uh, uh, that Ms. Hung and Robert gave are, are perfect. Uh, um, I, I would, you know, as a, as a, as a slightly uh, more northern European, uh, I would probably add the word discipline. You know, um, and discipline doesn't mean, you know, that, that everything has to be boring. Uh, discipline is about, you know, ma making some rules and regulations for yourself on how you live your life, how you do your studies how you communicate with your family, how you care for your family. But also, for example, as Ms. Hoon said, you know, and, and you, you said yourself, uh, Fung Yo, uh, it's difficult to communicate, uh, uh, do teamwork uh, on, 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 on the internet. Well, you know, uh, I, that, I, I hear that, but I have conference calls every day uh, with, with with sometimes 20, 30, 40 people on the, on the call, and it is about discipline, you know. So so when somebody speaks, somebody else listens. But also it is about you know the discipline of empathy. The the, 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 the What I mean with that is that 
there's always the same people who speak. I'm always the one who speaks. I know that. So for me, it's important to have a discipline to ask the ones that don't speak. So, so you really got to think about how you can make these things happen in a different setting. So how can you get similar dynamics in your team meeting online? And it just takes a little bit more effort. And that's why I really respect our teachers, right? Our teachers have got to work twice as hard online. And nobody, nobody understands that really. But they have to work so hard online to keep you guys together, learning, enthusiastic, you know, and they are tired at the end of the day, at the end of the week. And, and I, you know, the teachers probably think I don't, I don't really care for that and that I don't understand, but I trust me, I understand. It's really difficult. So what I'm going to say to you is discipline and put in the, the energy and the effort because you have to put in more to get the same result. And that is, you got to accept that. And that's not easy to do, but that will get you where you want to be, in my view. Yes, and yeah, uh, regarding to Mr. Marcel, I think um, now the new generation and the youth always say about personal branding. And I, I believe that discipline is somehow, instead of you try to try your personal branding, but this uh, discipline is something that invisible create your personal branding because personal branding is really important for you to embrace any person from the first time. You don't have to show them. You don't have to, you know, try to share them about it because your discipline just show them by your result, your your works, right? For me, if I have to pick. Um, a skill that I would suggest to you guys. I think um, most of the things I, I do now that I do learn by myself. So from your age, I believe that if you have the skill of sales learning or the article sales paces learning, that's really important for you before you go to the college, university, and when you graduate and have, even you have a career. Because for now, the world is flat which is mean everyone have a chance to accept everything on internet, to learn anything. So if you have a career later on, or even you, you need to compete with anything like essay or thesis when you was in them, when you will be in a university, you have to learn by yourself somehow. Because like I say, everyone have the same chance to accept the internet, which is mean now you can learn anything you want to. Right. So in the career, in the future for myself, even myself, I can see like if I'm even me, I have a career, but I have to have to learn to. I'm sure that every speaker here is too have to learn the new things, too, because we we cannot see. We cannot imagine how the world could happen in the next 10 years, 20 years later. But learn is something that, you know, always a key for you to do anything you want, even you want to change something right yourself your world your community you still have to learn to so i think from now self learning is a key in the skill that you also need to yeah and regarding to miss home communication because during the learning during anything issue crisis we have we need to communicate it for example you need to communicate with your teachers or even your co-worker to share your what your issue to feel you are not alone and somebody will support you, will help you anytime. But regarding to Mr. Robert, you need curiosity. You know, the world is magical. And if you want to do creativity, you want to do to create something, you need that curiosity in many layers. Because in the future, when you have, have a career, that path is going to change, but you already you know, shaping and practicing creative by curiosity, everything happened in your life. Even for example, you think about your house, how you want to renovate it because you want to feel alive. That's you have to design. Oh, OK, maybe I need more plants. Come to my store. Maybe you need to refill something by less plastic. You can come to my store, too, for example. And during to um, Mr. Marcel say, you know, discipline is really important. Somehow I feel like when I was young, I didn't have any discipline, honestly. 
until I grow up and, you know, spend time with any mature person. I feel like discipline is really important, really. So from now. now. Can I add one thing to hearing you speak makes me think think about the other thing that you need uh, in what you said about learning. And that is you need to be open to new things and different things. The speed of the development of new knowledge, new technology is so fast that you need to be really open-minded. You know, we, we for many years have, have, have relied on, you know, old, uh, uh, old equations, you know, uh, uh, in, in, in natural sciences and in the sciences that are now starting to be proven to be untrue in certain circumstances. What I'm telling you is that fact is not always fact any longer with the speed of change. And in order for, for us to achieve our new goals, is only going to happen with people like you, the young people. But you need to be open to accept that what is true today can be untrue tomorrow. And that doesn't mean it's bad. It could be much better, right? Different ways of making plastic, different ways of, of producing things, different ways of, of having energy. So this is what is really important, to be open to change and to new things. And that, I think, you as young people are much better at than, than us oldies, I'm afraid. Yes, I think like we all like so amazed with the question from students today. I mean, it's like definitely like, when we were that age, we couldn't met that question for sure. <laughs> so proud, right? So, Info, do you feel good about the answers? <laughs> Yeah, it's very helpful. Thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah, once again, we do thank you for your question too. Okay, so uh, speakers, students, teachers, I think like um, because the time is limited, so we have to go to the end. But I felt that the question from students today that have an open minded that the generation is going to be changed a lot in the future for sure. So that's why we here have a session communicate together. Even the lockdown happened, we still make it, right? And I believe all the sharing from the speaker, Mr. Marcel, Mr. Robert, and Ms. Hung, for sure we have students to decipher the code of the light in the long journey in the future, for sure, right? So I really hope that you guys were able to learn some new and interesting knowledge in through our session today. Prepare yourself a resilient spirit to continue enhancing your important values and be ready for any upcoming challenges. On behalf of VIS, I would like to once again give us insights thanks to the speakers today. I wish you all the best in life, happiness, always be healthy and successful. Once again, thank you, Mr. Marcel, Mr. Robert, uh, Mr. Hung, all of the guest speakers, special guests, teachers, students of the Sala campus who are joining this session today. Today's vast talk session has now come to an end. I'm so sad about it. Thank you for listening and see you at the event wrap up in semester two to discuss what you have done from our inspiring talk today. So goodbye and see you again. Goodbye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, students.